Howdy again everyone, and we are taking a trip back into Viltrox land today with one of their latest new autofocus lenses, the Viltrox 23mm f1.4 AF. It's currently just for Sony E-mount and Fuji X-mount mirrorless cameras, and it covers an APS-C image circle, so it's the full frame equivalent of a 35mm lens with an equivalent depth of field of about f2.2 or so. That makes it a brilliant little option for everyday use. If you mount it onto a full frame Sony camera, here is the vignetting you'll get around the edges at f1.4 and at f16, so as you can see it really is just for APS-C users. f1.4 also brings you some really fast shutter speeds, meaning that this is an excellent lens for shooting indoors with or in darker situations, it just has huge potential. Its price is £300 in the UK, or about $330 US dollars. For a wide-angle lens with autofocus, and with this bright of an aperture, that's actually very good value for money, so I can't wait to see how it performs. I'd like to thank Viltrox for providing me with a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this is a completely independent review. Let's start by looking at its build quality. I recently tested this lens's slightly older brother, the 33mm f1.4 autofocus, and this 23mm lens's build quality is more or less the same, it's really nice. The lens is made of metal throughout, and feels quite high quality. There's no weather sealing gasket around the rear mount, although you do get a USB port for future lens firmware updates, which is always a useful feature. Viltrox are quite good at keeping their lenses updated. Towards the rear comes the aperture ring. There's a gentle little click between the auto setting and f16, but other than that, the aperture ring turns smoothly. I personally prefer an aperture ring with clicks for stills photography, but a smooth action can be useful when video making. Here it is while shooting video on my Sony camera, as you can see, it changes your aperture quite smoothly. As you can guess, of course, the lens I tested was a Sony version. I did test the 33mm lens on Fuji mount with a little Fuji X-T20 camera, and when shooting video, the aperture did not change smoothly there, so I can't guarantee that Fuji video shooters will get the same smooth experience as Sony shooters here. Next comes a focus ring, which turns wonderfully smoothly, and it's quite responsive when you do. Some good news is that the lens displays virtually no focus breathing as you change focus, that could be useful for video makers. The lens's autofocus motor is almost silent, although if you're shooting video, then your camera's microphone will pick up a slight whirring sound. It's pretty quick, and confident enough, it's actually a little quicker than the 33mm lens I tested. The lens comes with a metallic hood, which is always something I love to see, it feels lovely and fits onto the lens perfectly. The filter thread size is 52mm wide, and it does not have image stabilisation. Overall, top marks for build quality, it feels well made and really solid in your hand, although I would have preferred an aperture ring with clicks on it to help me navigate my settings while shooting. Well, let's move on and take a look at image quality. I'll be testing this on a 24 megapixel APS-C Sony camera. In the middle of the image, we see some impressive sharpness and good contrast, although on contrasting edges, we see quite a lot of colour fringing. Let's look in the corners. They're quite murky at f1.4, and there's a lot of colour fringing on contrasting edges, but there's also some detail to be seen in there too. Stop down to f2 for more brightness, but no other real improvements. However, the middle of the image looks absolutely brilliant now. At f2.8, we see another little boost to give us perfect sharpness in the middle, and now the corners are looking a lot sharper and brighter too, although that colour fringing still remains. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 for further minuscule improvements, leaving you with very impressive image quality in the corners. Stop down to f11, and you'll see just a slight softening from the effects of diffraction, and f16 looks a little softer again. Overall, the image quality is a bit of a mixed bag in some ways, but it's generally decent enough. The middle of your images will always be really sharp, with good contrast, but at brighter apertures, you may be catching some colour fringing in soft corners, so in critical situations, you should definitely stop down the aperture. Now, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting. The lens projects a little bevel distortion with a moustache pattern, but not much. However, at f1.4, 
vignetting is pretty heavy, with some very dark corners. Those corners slowly brighten up at f2, f2.8 and f4, although even at f5.6 a little darkness in the corners is still visible, so a bit of a weak spot there. Let's take a look at close up image quality now. The lens can focus down to about 40 centimeters, just average for a lens of this focal length. When shooting close up, the image quality deteriorates a little, looking softer with stronger purple fringing. Stop down to f2 for more sharpness and contrast, and f2.8 looks reasonably sharp. Let's see now how the lens works against bright lights. Here we see a fair bit of flaring and glaring, even when bright lights are not directly in the picture, so it's a below average performance there, really. Next, Bokeh. Even though it's a wide angle lens, the Viltrox 23mm f1.4 can get you some notably out of focus backgrounds. The quality of the Bokeh is a little bit on the busy side, with a little bit of outlining, it's not the smoothest I've ever seen. And finally, Longitudinal Chromatic Aberration. As you can see here, it is strong with this lens, that writing is meant to be all black, rather than every colour of the rainbow. Here's f2, f2.8, f4 and f5.6, so that's another bit of a weakness of the lens. Overall then, the Viltrox 23mm f1.4 has great build quality, but the same clean bill of health can't quite be granted to its image quality. However, it's not too bad realistically, the lens is capable of some very good sharpness and quite striking images in darker situations. Also, what's undeniable is its good value for money. At £300, it's less than half the price of Fuji's own equivalent lens, and only about a third of the price of the closest equivalent lens on Sony cameras, this Zeiss option, which even has a darker maximum aperture. So we might not be seeing many fireworks here in terms of image quality, but in terms of value for money, the lens is a bit of a winner, so because of that, it does come recommended for its price.